Uh, my name is Philip Londrico. I am the Assistant Product Director for SOAR 2.0. Um, I am joined here today with other members of the Grants Administration team, uh, our regional presenter, and um, the SARDI team at Wright State University. Today we'll be covering the Appalachia region, and uh, we'll go ahead and get started with the presentation. Just some general housekeeping items before we get started. This meeting um, is being recorded and may be posted to the Ohio Moss website. Please mute your computer and or phone and please turn off your video camera while we're doing the presentation. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to put those questions into the chat box. Uh, we do have a moderator monitoring the chat box and we'll answer your questions. Um, we can also um, hold those questions to the um, to the end and we can ask those aloud for everyone uh, if you have a more detailed question you'd like to ask. The Ohio Moss website uh, for federal grant process, projects and processes contains facts and additional information about these projects and there is the link there below. Uh, we can also put that in the chat if you need to. Um, just a quick reminder that we do um, quarterly collaborative call surveys uh, after every uh, regional call. Uh, there is a link here on the slide. Uh, our chat moderator will also be putting this link into the um, chat box for everyone to be able to click on it for ease of access. Uh, we would appreciate you completing the survey. It should only take a couple minutes of your time to let us know um, what you thought about the meeting today, uh, if it was informative, um, if we answer your questions. Um, it gives us ideas on how to proceed in future meetings to make sure that we're meeting the needs of the community uh, here in Ohio. And with that, I would like to introduce Dr. Valerie Alloy, the Chief of the Bureau of Grants Administration. Dr. Alloy. Well, thank you, Philip, and good morning, everyone. We are so pleased to have our kickoff um, quarterly collaboration call here uh, in the new year. So first, I just want to say Happy New Year. We're so grateful that everyone made it. And the main sentiment that I want to share on behalf of the department is one of gratitude. Uh, we are absolutely aware of the circumstance in which we've all been functioning now for uh, an extended duration. The stress and wear and tear on all of our systems and our allostatic loads, our organizations, our staff and our clients. And we absolutely want you to know that we appreciate doing this work. Uh, we still have a roll up the sleeve uh, need in Ohio, uh, and we know that you embrace that roll up the sleeve mentality uh, with all that you have. The purpose of our calls today is really this week is really just to understand how the work is going uh, to try to frame the work as we look for future funding opportunities, particularly in the opioid space and to understand what have been our best practices and our greatest successes along with our challenges that the department needs to be laser focused on making sure that we are coming up with solutions that are equitable and sustainable. So with that, I simply say good morning, happy new year, and thank you for all of your service and your dedication uh, to serving the clients uh, of Ohio. Thank you, Dr. Alloy. Um, here's just a brief overview of our grants administration team, their roles, and if they have a specific grant or project or region that they're working on. Um, to bring um, light to uh, Kirsten Brownlee, she's our regional project, regional project lead for the Appalachian region, uh, and she'll be talking later today. And we'll move on to the SOAR 2.0 updates. Um, so I just want to thank everyone for making um, SOAR 2.0 year one, a very successful um, first year. Uh, SOAR 2.0 year one ended on 9-29-2021, and year two began on 9-30-2021. Uh, um, uh, we effectively call SOAR uh, year 2.0 year two, uh, 2.2 here at Ohio Moss. Uh, so you might see that language um, used a little bit more often throughout the year. The closeout process for year one um, turned out to be a, a very successful pilot project for us, um, and uh, we are going to plan to move forward with this process. Uh, next slide, please. 
Uh, in the fall, uh, at the end of the grant period, we'll disseminate reminder notices and information regarding the grant closeout process for this current year. Um, and uh, we'll we'll hope to carry that process going forward. Um, we do appreciate people's feedback regarding the grant closeout process, and we're using that information um, to um, continue the process to make it um, smoother and easier for everyone going forward. Uh, the unspent award amount for year one was requested as carryover for year two. Uh, we did submit the formal carryover request to SAMHSA, uh, and we're currently awaiting uh, processing for that request. Our hope is to learn more about the uh, request here in the next uh, couple of months. So as soon as we'll know, uh, we'll, we'll let everyone else know. As a reminder, uh, any carryover um, amounts that we do receive or are awarded are not a return to the original awardee. The Ohio Mass Senior Leadership has the final decision on how these carryover funds are awarded. Um, and then just as a reminder, uh, the mid-year reports are going to be due in March. And that'll be right before our next quarterly collaborative call in April. Um, so uh, we're asking everyone to submit their updates uh, no later than March 11, 2022. Uh, the department will be sending out some narrative forms uh, to complete um, here, hopefully this week um, or next week. And uh, please use that template when you're completing and submitting your updates. If you have any questions about those updates or how to complete the form, please reach out to your regional project lead and we'd be happy to assist you um, with that information. Um, next slide, please. And then um, just a reminder that we have a, a new website as of October. Uh, and with that new website for the whole department, we do have a new website for the um, state OB response. And there is the link there. Uh, if you do want that link, uh, it's on our slides. We can also put it in the chat box for ease of access. The uh, website is going to have the community investment guidebook. We are working on updating the guidebook and hopefully have that up and um, in the system uh, in a, very soon. Uh, it is completed. We're just moving for the motions and getting it into the website. Um, you'll find information updates, updated facts, um, information that you get from the quarterly collaborative call today, uh, calendar events of up tra updating trainings and uh, future collaborative calls, reporting requirements to Wright State University uh, and GIPRA, and then list of allowable costs. And then that brings us to uh, SOAR 1.0. Um, SOAR 1.0 officially ended on September 29, uh, sorry, September 29th, 2021. We want to thank everyone for their amazing uh, work that was completed under this grant. We were impressed by the amount of lives that were touched and um, by the projects here in Ohio. The Bureau completed a three year end of grant report and submitted it to SAMHSA in December. Uh, to date, we are expecting to send back less than $1.9 million uh, to the federal government for the total three year project period. Um, this is an amazing feat, and uh, each of you should be very proud of this accomplishment. Uh, we look forward to letting everyone know uh, the official number. Um, when we when we get that information. And with that, um, I will punt over to our assistant chief, um, Christine Sielski, uh, and she'll talk about Matt Pudot updates. Christine. Thank you, Philip. Good morning, everyone. Um, first, I want to thank everyone for the, um, especially the boards and providers who participated in the Matt Pudot grant. This important work uh, made a big difference in the lives of Ohioans and represents the dedication and hard work of the boards and providers to serve Ohioans who have OUD. So the Matt Badeau grant ended uh, 9-29-21 and uh, very little funding was returned to the federal government. The reports and um, final, <laughs> final financial report have been filed and there is currently no further posting for um, any future MAPADOA grants. So thank you again, everybody who worked on this grant. The next grant I want to talk about is the Regular Services Project or RSP grant. Um, again, thank you to everyone who worked on this grant. It was very, very successful. Uh, it closed on October 24th of 21. And as you'll see uh, when we get to the next slide, it outperform, outperformed serving Ohioans um, that were impacted by the COVID pandemic. 
So this was um, one grant that was not a substance use grant, but it was a, um, a grant specifically for individuals who are experiencing pandemic stress, and it was modeled after the natural disasters that FEMA would serve. Uh, the application that we sent to SAMHSA originally said that we would serve about 47,000 individuals in the state. We had $6.4 million to do that. However, as you can see, the final data uh, indicates that 651,159 individuals were served. And this is really due to the dedication of the boards and the individual provider staff. Um, they were paraprofessional staff, many um, peer supporters who worked on this program and their dedication to outreach and referral and then go back and outreach a second time to make sure that individuals were actually getting the resources that they needed. Um, the impact stories that were sent in by the boards and the providers uh, created that emotional bridge between direct service and um, the work that was being done. It made it possible to um, view the work that was being done from the data standpoint and then see the individual that was impacted and was represented in the data. So we really appreciate the impact stories that were sent in. I want to thank everyone again for their participation in this grant. Um, all of the final paperwork has been filed and the grant is closed. Uh, it was really a joy to work on this project during the pandemic and to see um, how quickly we could impact so many lives. Thank you. And with that, I'm actually going to turn it back over to Philip. Thank you. Thanks, Christine. Next slide, please. I would like to introduce uh, Kirsten Brownlee. She's the new regional project lead for the Appalachian region, and she'll take you away from here. Uh, Kirsten. Thanks, Philip. Uh, as you said, I am your new regional project lead. I've met some of you already. It's been a pleasure to meet you. Um, for everybody else, I look forward to working with you. So this morning we've invited um, a couple folks from within the Muskingum Behavioral Health and uh, within the Muskingum board area to speak this morning. So this morning we have Chris Headley, uh, Chief Prevention and Recovery Support Officer from, from Muskingum Behavioral Health, and Jenny Murphy, a parent and mentor child coach. Um, I'd like to introduce them and uh, give it to Chris first. Not sure that Chris might be here this morning. Let's see. Is Jenny Murphy on the call? This is Elaine Schuster from the board. I will contact real quick and see where they are. All right. Thank you, Elaine. Um, in the meantime, uh, Philip, would you like to move on to the folks at Wright State? Sure, we can go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and move forward, please. Uh, at this time, I'd like to introduce uh, the Sardi team at Wright State University, and they will give us an update on um, GIPRA and the state of our evaluation. Hello, thank you, Philip. Uh, my name is Angela Zaragoza, and I'm part of the Wright State uh, Sardi evaluation team. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm here with uh, Kathy Taylor, Nicole Kinsler, um, Brady Williams, and um, Jenna Killian. And we are going to present um, a few slides and talk about what we do. Uh, next slide, please. So on this slide, you will see that there have been 13,083 completed intakes in SOAR 2 from the start of the project of 930-2020 to 1-6-2022. Um, when we move into SOAR 2 year 2, of the 9,000 yearly goal that is projected for everyone, we have completed, or the providers have completed 3,327 
intakes, which is 37% of the 9,000 yearly goal. Of those intakes completed, local board is majority of them at 2,829, which is 85%. Community organization is 203 of those at 6.1%. Innovation is 214 at 6.4%. Moms is 66 of those at 2.0%. And OD, <clears throat> ODJFS and or Ohio Start is 15 of those at 0.5%. Next slide, please. Um, on this slide, we're gonna discuss a follow-up and discharge interview. From the start of the project, 3,366 follow-up records have been completed. This is um, the full interview and administrative. Of those follow-up records, 2,207 are true complete interviews, which is 66.6%. The completed follow-up rate of those in window is 27%. We also have 1,539 discharge records. This is completed and administrative entered into the I portal to date. Next slide, please. Here we want to take a little bit of time to discuss our um, biweekly reports. We have made some changes um, to these reports for everyone. As you can see, we divided up um, year one intakes and year two intakes so the board and uh, other providers can see what they've done for year one and what they're doing for year two. <clears throat> we have the follow-up rate um, and how that is, is um, you have the percentage next to it of what has been completed and you'll see like a little um, fraction over there. And on the bottom, those are the follow-ups that have been um, eligible since um, being entered in. So for example, on the top one, you'll see 16 out of 43. So 16 follow-ups have been completed out of the 43 of those that were eligible for a follow-up. That gives you a 30 37% um, follow-up rate. Our follow-up rate is calculated by dividing the first number into the second number and then multiplying it by 100. On the end, you also see that we added discharge interviews. Um, these include um, completed and administrative because both have the data we need to um, provide to SAMHSA and for any report requests at times. Um, so we just thought it'd be important so everybody can keep an eye on all the discharges being completed. I'm now going to turn this over to Kathy Taylor so she can go into talking about um, upcoming trainings and our schedule and things in that nature. Thank you. Good morning. Thanks, Angela. Um, I'm Kathy Taylor, and I um, my role within the Sardi group is is training. Um, so next slide, please. So we have um, some training numbers from October one through the end of December. Um, the numbers, the total trained um, from that from that period of time or during that period of time is 120 people. And we've had 102, uh, the biggest number for our full SOAR two trainings. And then we've had some, um, you know, we've had people come for the updates and refresher and, and uh, just a few people for the Q and A's. Uh, but these numbers don't tell the whole story. Um, we have done some individual trainings, um, full trainings uh, with um, people um, whose schedule didn't fit or they needed a quick turnaround to get people trained so they could get um, their feet on the ground running to do GEPRA um, in their agency. Um, our Q&A, you know, we've, we have kind of changed from uh, doing these um, group Q&As, although we still have them available, to one-on-ones. And we probably do, gosh, a couple dozen a week um, just one-on-one -on -one answering questions, just quick um, questions. So we are still serving um, and providing technical assistance to a lot of people, but um, how we do that has changed and it doesn't necessarily fit into these, you know, these boxes um, anymore. Next slide, please. This is the training schedule. Um, we have updated uh, it a little bit and I'll let you know why um, when we get to the next slide. But we have, um, I've just included everything um, that we're doing from 
you know, the beginning of January to the end of March. So we have two SOAR 2 full trainings a month and two SOAR 2 updates a month and then Q&A sessions um, we have. Um, but the reason why the Q&A sessions have changed a little bit um, is shown on this next slide, please. We are, we are going to, to have some training that um, we're going to require for uh, providers in the state of Ohio starting you know, at, towards the end of February. Um, we, we feel, uh, based on the questions that we've been receiving, um, emails we've been receiving, phone calls, texts, and the like, um, that we really need to place an emphasis on the follow-up and discharge interviews. We need to speak to the importance of both interviews. Um, and also we are, we are learning that we're, we're finding that people aren't really knowing where to find the loc locator form or the consent form, which is something that they should know based on the training. So um, the training that they received. So we are thinking some people are falling, falling through the cracks and not going to the training, but getting information from their, their agency, um, which is not part of the SOAR 2 contract um, that we have. SOAR 1 was train the trainer. Um, so we would have big regional trainings throughout the state um, when we were traveling. And then those people trained could go back to their agencies and train um, people who didn't come to the meeting or new hires. We found that that was not an effective model. We There were lots of um, errors, um, lots of confusion and lots of questions uh, based on that model because the training wasn't as thorough um, or focused um, as, uh, as for those in the agencies compared to those who attended the full trainings. So it was changed that everyone had to come through the training, um, you know, through, through our portal and get trained. But we're, we're thinking that that's not happening in all cases just a lot of questions. And we think that there may be some confusion um, as to knowing whether, as to knowing that there is a sort to um, consent form that is separate from um, an agency consent form, because uh, people aren't aware of that and asking where to find that. So we have these proposed dates. Um, we can always add more um, if needed uh, based on um, schedules. Um, for those who need to get to the training. Uh, so we have changed some of the Q&A sessions into these trainings, uh, which is why they have been removed from the, the regular training. Um, and you can always register for a training here um, at the SOAR, um, the SARDI program, the SOAR resources page. Uh, oh, next slide, please. So, this, this is what we have been doing. Um, like I said, lots of follow-up um, and discharge interview information. You know, of course, we want to have the follow-up rate as high as it can be. So we're talking to people, um, giving them tips and ideas on how to, to make their, their numbers more successful um, with that follow-up rate. We're also hitting home the discharge interviews because that, that rate overall in the state of Ohio, the success rate for completion is low. And um, you know, we want, we want people to complete these discharge interviews, but even if you can't find somebody, we really need to um, impress upon the agencies that it's important to even do an administrative discharge because you do the because when you do the administrative discharge there's that section K where um, providers record and document the services that they provided to that client and that information is very important because in the intake interview it, you this is you you put down in um, plan services what you plan to do but you you know rubber stamp it so to speak by completing the administrative discharge interview or even the full you know discharge interview by completing that section K and that is really important information to highlight and show what you have done because it supports the work that you say you're going to do um, that you outlined in the grant applications that goes to Ohio Moss that goes to SAMHSA 
and that just that's that's documentation that you're doing the work that you set out to do. Um, we've had information with regards to deleting interviews. That is a complicated process. Again, the consent and locator forms. Um, and we are going to have the discharge interview data added to the reports that you're getting. Um, and of course, you know, there are always um, some issues with getting access to the SOAR2 portal, whether it be a glitch in the system or more most likely it's the provider um, uh, getting trying to get into the portal incorrectly. So that's what we do every day. Um, and we are happy to do it. Um, we are happy to meet with all the providers. We love Zoom and I'm not being facetious. We really do um, because we get to see the providers and meet with them one-on-one -on -one, um, and it lets them, it gives us a face to let them know who's supporting them in their efforts. Next slide, please. So if you need to contact us, um, please um, use the SOAR Gepper questions at write.edu. That hits six email boxes. One of the email boxes is our internal IT guy, um, but we, uh, we, we use this email um, and we, we really encourage you to as well, because if one of us is working with another provider and you know, someone may be um, interacting with one of us one-on-one -on -one, um, and that person is working with somebody else, if you CC this email address, it will hit all of us and we can respond to you more quickly. And again, we have the sardiprogram.com forward slash SOAR, which is our resources page where you can get short training videos, the consent form, the paper form of the GEPRA um, and, and other features. So thank you for your time. We really appreciate it. Um, reach out to us whenever you need help. And um, thank you for the great work that you are doing in the state of Ohio. Thank you uh, to the Sardi team for that um, presentation piece. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so I'm just, here's the survey again. Um, I just want to make sure that you guys had this, uh, the link. It, it is in the chat. Um, at this time, um, I would like to uh, go to the next slide. And if um, some, I would like to have some, maybe some dialogue um, in, in place of our presentation from earlier um, from the Muskingum area. Uh, if anyone would like to um, unmute themselves, turn on their camera and maybe talk about um, their project, maybe some successes um, that they've had with their project, maybe some barriers or challenges that they had with implementing their project or um, going with service delivery. Um, you see if uh, maybe other people will share those same successes or same challenges and maybe we can have a dialogue about how we can uh, work together or use some helpful hints and tips um, to uh, work through those together. So I invite anyone that would like to share um, to unmute themselves and turn on their camera and talk now. And if not, then that's OK. This is Elaine with the Muskingum Board again, and my uh, feedback is that uh, my presenters are not in their office yet, so I apologize and we will have to get them back on the agenda at another time. No problem, Elaine. Thank you for the update. Um, if you have any general questions um, or um, comments, I would invite you to put those in the chat um, or um, to unmute yourself and ask the question now. Philip, this is Fonda from the Board Association. Hi, Fonda. I'm starting to hear a lot from our members with their budgets from the SOAR 2.01 to 2 in terms of things um, that had been previously approved in the budget that are now unallowable. Can you speak to overall changes, what has occurred related to um, some of the budget revisions that are going on back and forth? Sure, not, not a problem, Fonda. Um, just to give you a um, update there, I know that uh, SAMHSA last year uh, due to COVID did allow an expanded um, allowables for those projects, such as um, pushing forward with um, 
different types of housing um, with different types of allowables, such as um, hygiene items and things of that nature, um, because the Ohio and the and the United States and the world in general was going through this pandemic. Uh, they this year we are rolling back to what the actual allowables are um, as that expanded guidance is no longer available. Um, I, if Dr. Alloy or Chris would like to elaborate on that. Um, you may go do so. I see Dr. Alloy. Good morning, Fonda. Good morning, everyone. Um, and thank you for your question. Yes, there has been some changes uh, from the initial rollout of 2.0 in the second year. Uh, some of the notes that Phil mentioned are the case, and others were things that we found uh, as we move closer to audit time uh, that were approved in the first year budget that could become audit concerns in the second year. So we were trying to um, be a little more um, uh, circumspect about the allowables. But we are absolutely um, open, as you are aware, Fonda, about the conversation we can have with boards because we recognize there could be activities that they had funded, that they had stood up, and now it's looking like they may not be able to continue. We will definitely have an open dialogue about what we can do to support those uh, requests for the few that are coming through that are catching uh, in that area. Thanks, Dr. Allo. One other question. Um, because there has been some changes from one to two, do you guys have like um, a listing of what is no longer allowable that we can get out to share? Because what I'm hearing from a number of our members, there's a lot of going back and forth with the budget process this year. So if there was something that kind of documented um, what is no longer allowable, we could get that out to our members to maybe help the process go a little smoother. We appreciate that, Fonda. Why don't we take that as a note and do a follow up with you about how we can satisfy that information need? Excellent. Thank you. You're so welcome. Thank you for that. Uh, any other questions? Well, if there's no more questions, um, I would just want to thank everyone for taking their time this morning to be with us and um, to learn about what we're, what's going on with the, the grants for the current year. Um, I look forward to seeing everyone's mid-year reports in March and, um, and looking forward to our next collaborative call in April. Uh, we will get those dates out in for April um, right around the same period when we uh, in March when we get the um, mid year report stuff in. If you have any questions in the meantime, please feel free to reach out to your regional project lead uh, to have those answered. Mm -hmm. And uh, I look forward to hearing from everyone soon. Have a great, wonderful rest of your day. Stay warm uh, and be safe. Thank you. Thank you, Philip. Bye bye.